Hey Luke here with CatsandCarp.com. Me and my friend Danny here, we're pole fishing for carp and we're having a great time. We're catching catfish and carp and bluegill and Danny's uh, showing me up. This, he's, yeah, this is a great time. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about pole fishing. So when I say pole fishing, what I'm talking about is using essentially just a pole. No eyelets, no reels. Um, it's just a long pole with some line attached to the end. This is a real popular way of catching carp in Europe, in the UK, and in Asia. And it's a load of fun. It's challenging and it makes small fish feel monstrous. Okay, so this uh, pole I got is made by Drennan. It's an 11 meter pole, uh, specifically designed for carp fishing. And I've got two top kits. So the last two sections of the rod, I have two of them. And one is strung up with a heavier duty elastic, probably the strongest elastic I could find. And the other one's a little bit of a more subtle elastic. And the elastic is a shock absorber. So I've got a chance of catching over 20 pound carp here. So I want as much elastic as I can. The elastic is attached to a device called a bung. And yes, the bung goes up the bung hole. <laughs> oh, British come up with some weird words. At any rate, so this is a roller bung and it's attached uh, and it basically allows you to pull the end of the elastic so that when you get down to the end you can fight the fish by pulling on the elastic and and uh anyway so we're gonna get uh our uh, my leader and float and all that attached to the end and we're gonna see what we can do i thought you guys might like a little peek into my tackle bag uh, so as you can see here, it's a lot of camera equipment. I've got some Euro style rod holders some pole holders. I've got a collapsible camping chair and here's my tackle box. So I've got a lot of floats and by the way, this is my European style pole fishing tackle box. I have a separate tackle bag tackle box for all my Chinese and Asian style pole fishing and gear. So that's... <laughs> So for whatever reason, that's how it is. But this is how you attach the line on the end of a Euro style one. There's just this little hook and a sleeve and you put the, uh, the loop on the end of your leader, put it through the hook and then slide the sleeve over it so it can't come off. This is a little uh, Euro style pull float and uh, there's a little eyelet near the top you feed the line through and then you take these little chunks of silicon sleeve that you feed up your line and stick uh, the stem of the float in. I'm using a number six hook and just a little bit of split shot. And uh, here's my little collapsible camping chair that fits into my tackle bag. It, it's nice, it's got a little backrest, so it's a little bit comfier than a uh, normal camping chair, but a little bit more work to put together. Um, and I've got this little camping chair and I've got a little end table that goes with it. So kind of get all set up and have, uh, I'm gonna, relax a little bit you know i'm getting old enough where i appreciate a good backrest um, but uh, it's a it's a nice little setup everything fits into my bag so here's my beta choice can of sweet corn you know classic and uh there's my uh, can opener everyone keeps being shocked every time i do this on a video i get all these comments and you know you know the can opener wasn't invented for like decades after the tin can was invented so I mean this is this is how people open cans with a pocket knife but apparently it blows people's mind anyway I got potato flakes I've got some breadcrumbs I've got some sweet corn I'm mixing it all up and uh, I've got the sweet corn on the end of the number six hook I'll put two or three kernels on the end there and then I'll take uh, balls of this mix and just chuck it out and I'll either use a slingshot or pitch it out by hand and kind of get a little chum going so this pole I'm using is a British style pole. It doesn't telescope, it's got sections. Each section is about a meter and you can add sections or take off sections as you need. Um, it's carbon fiber, it's pretty expensive. It was a little under $300 I think. But this pole is not designed to bend the same way that fishing rods do. And I learned the hard way that if you pick it up by the top kit, it will not bend, it snaps in two. And that's exactly what I did. Oh, my soul just broke. Oh, piece of crap. Oh my 
Well, I'm learning a life lesson there. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so it turns out I can get the top kit replaced for about 50 bucks, but lesson learned. And luckily I had that spare top kit. And uh, anytime you want to handle it, by the top kit, you gotta take the end sections off, even just a two, couple sections, and uh, it can cause you problems. So, lesson learned. Oh, oh, yeah, look at that. Hey, hey doing well, Daddy. <laughs> That felt like a monster fish. I'm really nervous to see what a carp's gonna be like. Oh well, already broke one rod tip. Why not make it two? Now my buddy Danny had a Chinese style setup. You can notice he's got the big hard sided uh, tackle box that you sit on that has the rod holder attachment. He's got a telescoping rod instead of one that comes apart in pieces. His is fiberglass instead of carbon fiber and bends a whole a lot more and doesn't have the elastic. This is, is typical Chinese style pole fishing. Um, not just Chinese style, but Asian style pole fishing, which is much different than the, the Euro style or the British style pole fishing. Um, so it's a nice little comparison here. And there's things that I like about each one of these, these uh, different styles. So uh, there's some of the gear I like more and some of the gear I like less. And there's, there's pros and cons about each. But uh, it's very uh, interesting. It's a, it's a challenging way to catch fish. And, and if you're in an area that just doesn't have trophy catfish or trophy carp, this is a kick butt way to have loads of fun catching smaller fish. Because if you can land an eight pound carp on this, that's a monster. Okay, that's an awesome, awesome fish. If you do it on spinning gear, eh, it's not a big deal. But look at the bend that carp is putting in his rod, man. That is a serious fight. There is no drag to deal with. You're just hoping and praying your gear doesn't snap in two. And there's a lot of technique involved. Look at that. Look at that. And that's just a little, oh, like, four-pound carp, three-pound carp doing that. You know, it's a fabulous fight. So if you can't get bigger fish, use pulls. Use smaller gear and have more fun catching them. And that's a real challenge there. That's a real challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw, you can put him in there. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's a beauty. Nice. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking this is a crazy amount of money to be spending on catching small fish. But it doesn't have to be expensive. You know, my my pole was super expensive and I broke it. Um, Danny told me his rod cost him about sixty dollars, uh, $60. and I have a number of Asian style telescoping rods that are under thirty bucks. You can use a thirteen dollar crappie pole no, from Walmart hard. and get much the same effect. You know, it's just absolutely fun. So, you know, don't be intimidated by the price. You can spend as little or as much on this as you want. And, there, and it's, it doesn't have to be expensive. It's a pull with a piece of string, a hook. That's it, you know. Um, maybe splurge and get yourself a landing net, you know. Oh, you're, that's, that's a, you know, you get the pole, the landing net, the, and you're, you're good to go. That's all the gear you need to buy. So for $20, you can, you can realistically out, outfit yourself with a nice little, pole fishing kit and go out to a little farmer's pond and just tear it up on bluegill and small channel oh, cats and small carp there we go and just absolutely have a ball and if you break there your rod you're not breaking the bank a little catfish Ooh. There we go. 
<laughs> yeah, that was a violent take. My bobber just went thump. Okay, the saddest part about this whole trip wasn't breaking my rod. The saddest part was I look over and Danny hooks into this big old carp. Danny sets the hook and plays it for like just a few seconds. That thing runs and snaps his rod in two. And the worst part is his GoPro turned off. Show me that. Yeah, show me that. Huh? Whoa. That was a big carp. I could tell. <laughs> yeah, that looked, that, I, that was serious. That was at least 12 pounds. Luckily, Danny brought a spinning rod, so he didn't have to call it quits after his uh, rod gave up the ghost. But it was kind of an expensive trip. I broke my top kit on a foreign imported carp rod. He broke his imported carp rod. Uh, his baiting spoon uh, got dropped in the water, and uh, I think I lost a float uh, too. So it was, uh, <laughs> we had a good time, but we lost a lot of gear. So this device is called a keep net. So we put all the fish we catch in here so that we can kind of take a picture at the end of the day and kind of see what we caught. Uh, we, it keeps them really fresh and alive and, and it's not a bad way to store smaller fish. Well, I hope uh, you had a good time watching the video and learned a little something new. Uh, check out uh, more videos like this on catsandcarp.com. We put out new videos every week. And uh, let's, uh, let's get these bad boys back in the water. If you want to learn more about catching carp, we've got a playlist with all of my tutorial videos about carp fishing. Additionally, we have a carp bait playlist, which have all the videos that have anything to do with carp baits. Make your own carp baits and the different type of carp baits out there. So check out our playlist. If you like what you see, don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks for watching.